Hey everybody, it's your girl Tina. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well and having a great Sunday. So you all, I'm here in this video because I wanted to share my Crafty Dare makes for the past few weeks. Um, big, big thumbs up and hugs go out to Therese, who is a part of our Crafty Dares page. She reached out to me and she's like, hey Tina, when we starting back up on our crafty dares, we did take a break for the summer. And um, to be truthful and honestly with you, I just had already walked away from crafting. I was already, you know, sick and going through a lot of things. So I kind of had put crafty dares all the way back in the back of my mind to Therese reached out to me because she really wanted to come back and get it back going. So thanks, Therese, for that nudge, that spark that you ignited um, inside of me to just bring up my um, crafty part of my life, right? All right, so we kicked it back off and we started back up. And here are the dares that we had to create with. Let's start off with um, the first dare was we had to use a pumpkin, burlap, and yarn. And so here's what I created. I created an ATC card. I used the black card stock that I had. I used that roll of burlap trim is what it's called, but it's burlap. And it's just in a smaller form and it's on a roll. I put that on top of the black card stock and then I took some some of this acrylic paint terracotta and I wiped it on top of and you can see the burlap very vaguely I really like that but I um I wiped some of that terracotta acrylic paint on top then I had a little fragment of some paper that I've been hoarding that's full of bugs. And I really love that paper. I took a little, little piece of that and um, adhered it, inked the edges with black soot. Here's some more paper from my scraps where I pulled out my um, dies from Michaels. You all know every year Michaels have these pumpkin dies for the fall um, Halloween crafting, I guess. And every year I go buy them. They are basically almost the same. Just it, every year something slightly different. Uh, the wicks on these are bigger. That's the only thing. The pumpkin, the smallest pumpkin is two different sizes. But it's like the basic shapes. So I pull that out and I cut those out and I stacked them together. And then I took some letters from my stash just some stickers right and i put fall on there then i have these little brass that says admit one and then the mummy cloth i call it cheese cloth mummy cloth and uh yeah and then i put a ruler over here i took that same terracotta paint watered it down and made me some splashes so this was one of our dares. Again, you had to use a pumpkin, burlap, and yarn. All right, so that's one of them. We're going to sit that over there to the side. Another one that we had to do, you all, was we had to use a mason jar. We had to make a tag, and it had to be um, rustic colors, right? That's the wrong make. <laughs> So let me show you what I used. I used these markers, my Copics. All right. I used those Copics. I used this little um, stamp that I got from Michaels last year. I think I paid 10 cents for this because it was on clearance. Okay. Here's the two mason jars that I decided to use. 
I use a Whimsy Stamp Mason Jar die. And then I use this Diamond Dies Mason Jar die. I also use these candy, calendar candies from Jada Blossom. I use the October stamp. Okay, first time using those. So let me show you what I created. So again, the dare was you had to um, use a mason jar, a tag, and you had to have rusty colors. And I chose to go with candy corn theme. Right? So here's that um, whimsy stamp jar. Sorry. Okay. And I just went in with that stamp and I stamped all over the uh, jar with that candy corn stamp. And then I used my copies to color them in. Right? Then I went around with some, um, some distress ink and I distressed it lightly and then put water splashes on it. Can you see it? I really like the way it turned out. On the top up here, I use this um, this metallic color pen. It's what I used on the top to color the lid. I really like the way that it turned out. And then I just put me two buttons on the end. So that's one tag. And here's the tag. Same technique. But this time, I cut out some of the candy corn and put it on my hanging element and then there's the October stamped out I really like that and then again here is the diamond dies mason jar same technique same colors October I put the two buttons and a candy corn as the hanging element okay so this was another there for one of the weeks all right let's put this stuff aside i really had um fun making these little small um projects all right our next dare was we had to create a, with leaves a fall sentiment and then you had a free choice you could use whatever else as a third element that you that you wanted to all right, here's my make. I made a card. And I really like you all the way the card turned out. So I used this um, green, like an olive green paper card stock. I used some um, paper from a paper pad that I had in my stash for a while. And then I embossed right and here's my autumn blessings and then this is the inside this is relatively a simple card and you all i really fell in love with this card so let me show you what i used to create i wanted to make the pumpkin out of ovals so this is my classic um ovals from spellbinders the small and the large i used the third one on the large set to create the pumpkin so I cut out three of them and then I just stack put two of them together and stacked one on top to make the pumpkin and I really 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 like the way it came out I like the um difference in the colors for the pumpkin because usually we use orange and when I um envisioned this I said I wanted to use something different to create a pumpkin right all right and then lastly this is the branches with leaves Sizzix embossing folder that i use you all i love embossing folders and i i often use them in my projects i know a lot of people don't use embossing folders anymore but tina loves them i love a embossing folder i feel like embossing folders take your projects to the next level it adds something to your project in a simple way a subtle way so this was one of our makes leaves a pumpkin and a free choice 
Okay, so let's put that right there. The next dare that we had, um, you had to create with a, let me get it right, candy corn, lunch bag or sack, and you had to use a face. So let me show you all what I used. I used this creepy cloth, which I call like cheesecloth too, but yeah, it's creepy cloth. I get a lot of questions every time I use this in a project. Where can you buy this? This is the time of year to get this from the dollar store. Halloween. This is the time of year. They have it in this color and they have it in black. And this is how it looks. It comes, you get this much. And I'm telling you, I think I bought this um, two or three years ago. And look, it's still full. And I've been, I craft with this all the time. So if you could just get one, you will have it for a long time. So that's that. I used that. Then I pulled out for my face the Jane Davenport um, eye, stick, uh, eye stamps. I love this. is one of my favorite face stamps. I love her. And then lastly, I use this Gina Marie candy corn dye. Okay. So let me show you all what I created. Let me take this off so the, the glare won't be on the camera. Oh, I also used these um, 25 cent stamps. These are not stamps, you all. I'm sorry. These are tickets. Please bear with Tina. I got to get back in the um, in the groove of things. All right. So these are 25 cent tickets. And here's my make. I took one of these small brown sacks that I had in my stash. I made the candy corn. I die cut it out. Now let me tell you about this this die. This is one of those dies that you don't have a foundation, right? So as you can see, the die cuts into three pieces. Okay? The die cuts into three pieces. Well, you have the three pieces and then you have to adhere them together for them to be like this. So what I had to do was I took the pieces, I traced around the die, right? This this piece, this is a solid piece and then these are three individual pieces. The solid piece cuts into a three, three piece set, okay? I took it, I traced it around and I used this for my base. I used that for my base. And then I took the three pieces because let me show you. See, that's three. That's two different pieces. I took those pieces and I adhered them on here to make it look like this. Okay. These type of dies are kind of difficult for me when they don't have a base to for you to build on top of. But that's how I made that candy corn. Stamped my eyes on there. I took some of the cheesecloth, creepy cloth, whatever you want to call it. Put it on the back. Put my candy corn on top. And then I have my 25 cent ticket there. I really like this. So I'm, I'm intending to gift this to someone. And I'm going to put a card in here. A 3x3 three three card. And a um, gift card. That I'm going to gift this to someone um, that I have in mind that I need to um, be a blessing to. All right. So this was another make that we had. And then finally, you all, the last make, you had to um, use a fall recipe. You had to use a tag, make a tag. And then you had to have hanging elements with a button or buttons right so let me show you what i used once again i used the embossing folder this is my Teresa collins timeless set embossing folder 
I really, really, really like this embossing folder. Let's see if I can find something where you all can see it a little bit better. So this is that embossing folder. This is the back. All right, so I use that. And then I use this mason jar. Um, is from, this is like the mason jar just from that honeybee. Honeybee Stamps Mason Jar. It's a fold, and you can make a card out of it. This was gifted to me, but I believe they got this from AliExpress. I don't know because, again, I'm looking at this packaging, and this is the original packaging, but I did get this. This was gifted to me. All right, so I used that die, and instead of making the card, I cut the whole thing out, and then I just cut it, at the fold line and made two it gave me two mason jars and i made it into a tag okay let me show you my tag here's the tag i did a wasso recipe using this mason jar so i took some manila folder and that's what i used to cut out this um the jar the jar and then I embossed it with the embossing folder. This is the front. And look at the back. Oops, sorry, you all. Okay. So, I after I cut the jar out, I went in with my inks and I distressed it. I used Rusty Hinge, Fire Brick, uh, Spice Mar Marilade, and uh, a little bit of barn door and then i use some tea dye those are the uh, distress inks that i use to come up with this color okay so after i distress inked all of the jar then i ran it through the embossing folder right let me go back a step sorry y'all i cut the that cut out i inked it with all of those distress inks then i went in with some water splashes i let this dry completely then i went in and i wrote my recipe that's what i did i wrote the recipe and everything that i wanted to write on the jar front and back okay then I ran it through with the embossing folder, and this is what we got. I wanted to make sure those steps was clear, because if you try to write on the jar before the ink dries, it's, it's going to mess up. It's going to bleed. It's going to rip your paper because the paper is moist. If you try to write after you emboss the paper, you're not, it, it's going to mess up because you got grooves, ups and downs. So you're not going to be able to write smoothly. So it was very important that I gave you the directions and the steps that I took so that if you try to attempt this project, it, it you won't waste time, you won't waste product. Okay. So that's how it was done. Cut it out with your base paper, ink it up, let it dry write your recipe, run it through the embossing folder, and this is what you will have, okay? Then I took some gold foil paper that I had, cut the lid out, adhered it at the top, and I just love the detail of this lid. And then I adhered some, some uh, little twine here. I made these two tiny tags, warm winter wishes. I put... 2021 again i inked this up had to let it dry stamp my sentiment and then this little tiny one i wrote the recipe what the recipe was wassail it's a warm drink in the winter time i put a bell here and then on the back here's my hanging element with a button i really love the way that my mason jars turned out and i really enjoyed this process all right you all so these are my five makes for october for our crafty dares 
Crafty Dares is open. Anyone that would like to join, you're more than welcome to send me a message. The requirements are is that you have an active page. What is an active page? You have at least been active on your page for the last three months with crafty um, post. Let me let me emphasize that you must have crafty post, which means you have created things and you posted it on your page. Your page been active for three months, right? Please understand, you have to be a creator. I need to see that you are a paper crafter, whatever kind of crafter, mixed media crafter. It doesn't matter as long as you have crafty items that you've created on your page. You're more than welcome to come and join us. Just send me a DM and uh, we'll go further. We always looking for new people to come and join our family. To everyone, have a great day. I will be um, popping up with videos, you all, because I have a tote full of packages that have been um, sent to me since I have been out, and I just haven't been able to. Um, I just haven't been able to open them, and I haven't did a video because I wanted to open them with you all, and so I'll be popping up here and there, and start showing you all um, the blessings that I have received. I did receive some right when I walked away as well, and I never um, came to do a video, so I want to do that. I love you all. Listen, family, till next time, stay blessed and keep creating. Have a wonderful day.